Alright, so this is going to be a video about a basically a philosophy that I have on how mathematics should be taught um, based on the level of abstraction. Now this is for my EPS 415 class and my doctorate program and the title of the class is Technology and Educational Reform. Um, so basically what this is going to be all about is how can technology be used to reform the math classroom. So being a math teacher I'm kind of taking the math focus on this educational reform. So how can technology reform the math classroom. Um, and basically, what I want to focus on is the differentiation of mathematics using technology. However, this is not just the differentiation based on the level of difficulty. A lot of times when we think of uh, differentiation, we think of um, the appropriate level for certain students. Rather than thinking the appropriate level of difficulty, I'd rather focus on the differentiation of the level of what's called abstraction. And basically, abstraction is the level of complexity or basically the level of details that are in a certain certain system or a certain concept. Okay, so the best way to probably explain what abstraction is, is to use a computer. So I am using a, the software program right now on a computer to record this video. Okay, so I am using uh, this software program. I have no idea how it actually works. I just know that it was programmed with some programming language. So I am using the program. I don't even care about how, I don't even care how it was programmed in there originally by whoever created it or whatever team or whatever company created it. I am just using it to record, okay? Now, if you go down a level of abstraction, then you would go to the programming language and how it was actually programmed and created to begin with. Now, if you go down another level of abstraction, so we have that programming language, now we're getting down to like the bits and the bytes, the ones and the zeros of how the computer works. So how the programming language um, basically creates those ones and zeros to create the program, again, that I am recording with right now. Okay, so it was programmed in some language, and then that programming language was based on a bunch of ones and zeros, which I even know less about. And then those ones and zeros are actually represented by certain voltages and certain currents on certain transistors and computer chips. Um, so it's, it's even less abstract as you get lower and lower in that level of abstraction. And to really understand how that voltage and current and the, and the computer chips and all that stuff works, then you would have to understand a lower level of abstraction would be like the quantum mechanics, the uh, the particle physics basically understanding of how those computer chips work. Okay, so that's basically how abstraction works. I am using this program in a very high level of abstraction. I'm just using the program. I'm completely ignoring all those other details. I'm ignoring the quantum mechanics, the bits and the bytes, the ones and the zeros, the programming language that was created to make this program. That's all that stuff is being ignored. It's being abstracted away and I'm focusing on the higher level of abstraction, which is making this video right here. Okay, so that's basically what abstraction is using an example with the, with the computer in this program. Now, how does that relate to abstraction with mathematic abilities uh, or mathematical levels and how I want that differentiated? Well, that's kind of uh, related to the next topic that I want to talk about, which is the pure mathematics versus the applied mathematics. Okay, pure mathematics is basically what, uh, how the mathematical models or the mathematical ideas are put together by these, these pure mathematicians. These mathematicians that are just looking at it at the very, very, very low level of abstraction. So how, how the math is actually working. And the problem, or, or in my opinion, one of the main problems with the Common Core Standards is they focus a lot on that pure mathematics. Um, so much so that oftentimes students lose the whole point in learning math to begin with, okay? The whole point in learning math is to, 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 use, to do something with data, so whether you're gonna take a bunch of data and create a model with it, or use a model to create data, basically, and all that is just designed to solve real world problems, okay? So th thankfully, all these people, all these pure mathematicians were studying the rules of the universe, the rules of how math works, how certain models work, and then, now, how that is applied, how those models are applied, and how they are used would be the applied mathematics, okay? So pure mathematics is basically creating all the ideas with math, and then applied are actually applying those. Now, you can major in applied mathematics. There are applied mathematicians, but you can also think of applied mathematics as, you know, scientists, engineers, uh, computer programmers, um, business people, economics people, people that actually are using all those clever ideas that were created uh, by the pure mathematicians they're using those in other clever ways. They're just not creating the mathematics to begin with. They're just using them to solve real world problems. And to me, that level of abstraction of, of the applied, they're not getting into the, the nitty gritty details. The applied mathematics are focusing more on the higher level um, 
levels of abstraction, okay? And in, in my opinion, I feel like students should be more focusing on that, that higher level of abstraction rather than getting bogged down in the details. Now, obviously getting bogged down in the details can be important at times, and in certain places it definitely should be important, but if you are so bogged down in the details, if you're such a slave to the details that you can't see the forest for the trees, you can't actually see why the math is important, then I feel like it's counterproductive. So you're losing, you're, you're, you're losing things because you're focusing so much on the details. Okay, so there's gotta be that, there's gotta be that right balance for it because I used to be a chemist and as a chemist, I was using computer programs where I didn't exactly know 100% how they worked. I just knew how they worked in relation to what I was doing and what I was trying to find, what problem I was trying to find. Um, I used to be a computer programmer. I was using functions when I was a computer programmer that I had no idea how they worked at all. Okay, I was just trusting the functions, I was trusting the pure mathematics that somebody else created and using that to solve some other problem. Okay, so I was applying what some other pure mathematician already came up with to solve a problem. Uh, and again, I wasn't being bogged down with, with the understanding of all those other things. Now, now the problem with, with the way, in my opinion, again, the problem with the way it's taught in school, the, uh, what, I, what I view as needs to kind of get reformed a little bit is the, the lack of the details, to so focus on the details a little bit less so we can actually apply them. Okay, um, and this has happened in, in, in society uh, numerous times. A good example is, is Newton. Um, Isaac Newton created calculus so he can solve certain physics problems. Okay, so he created an entire field of mathematics. It's, it's one of the most important fields of mathematics uh, today. And although he just created it for physics, that pure mathematics model was also used on other things such as business, for economics, again, for chemistry, for physics, with all these other fields, even though he was just thinking about it just for physics, it's used for many other things. Um, Einstein, he, he created the theory of general relativity, but he used somebody else's ideas on uh, non-Euclidean geometry to you apply that in his model. So yes, he's very clever. Einstein's very clever and very smart for what he came up with, but the pure mathematics was actually already created. He just applied that to something else. Okay. So again, th that's kind of what I'm talking about here is you don't want to be a slave to the details. So the next thing that I want to talk about is um, why mathematics even looks the way it does right now. So it's basically a history of mathematics education. Now, in the very beginning, it was in the very beginning of, of formal math education. Um, a lot of that math was was done by hand. Okay, there wasn't calculators, there wasn't this technology that we have now. Uh, people used tables, so they would they would use books. I guess you can look at books as a form of technology that was used with um, a tables of values for certain things like trig functions. You can easily create uh, you know plug in a trig uh, value on your calculator and it spits something out. Where before we had calculators, we couldn't do that. There had to be there had to be table books of tables basically that had all these values printed out and you would have to go through those tables and look up certain values uh, so in, in all the arithmetic all that other stuff had to be done by hand okay so it, it made sense that that there needed to be more of a, of a pure basis on it because you couldn't abstract away any details because you didn't have the technology to abstract away details except for the book of tables Okay, then eventually calculators came around that basically replaced those tables and now you could do quick really quick arithmetic which is great because the arithmetic that people were doing before was taking such a long time that they couldn't even apply it to as many ideas as they could as they could once calculators were created. Things were basically rapidly rapidly um, able to be solved and, and rapidly able to be figured out. Um, so basically, with the advent of calculators, they abstracted away a lot of the arithmetic. They didn't have to round as much. They could actually get more precise values on certain calculations. Again, because calculators abstracted away arithmetic. Now, some people, when calculators first came around, they were very, very nervous and very apprehensive about this. They thought that because students weren't doing the arithmetic in their head, that their math ability was going to change. Now, if you think about math as a relationship, as math as a technology itself, because it's a technology based on the ideas that it does, it's a, it's a tool, it's a relationship that we have to solve other problems. And so if you think about math as a technology, math as a, as a technology actually changed 
changed. It shifted. Just like, um, you, you know, people were, were thinking, um, you know, the, the internet was first created to uh, dispense information, to have a, a centralized form of information in a certain place. But now it's also used for um, connecting to entertainment, to um, sell things. So even though certain technologies were created for one purpose, people can change that purpose of the technology. And that's basically what happened to math. So if you think about math as a technology itself, it changed from instead of doing arithmetic by hand and understanding everything, um, mathematics changed to more, more abstract in a way that, that arithmetic um, in, in favor of doing calculations. Okay, so um, people that were against it thought that math was going to be hindered by it, but really what happened was the math as a technology evolved. It got to a, a better update. It was a better version of that mathematics. Um, so that's basically what calculators did, regardless of people who were so against it now, it's almost, you know, calculators are, are ubiquitous. They're on our phones. They're, 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 we're, we're never without a calculator. So it makes sense to always use them, and it makes sense to evolve um, mathematics to what it is after calculators. Okay, so now, so, so calculators are kind of, we're still kind of stuck in that calculator phase, but now with the advent of, of computers and the explosion of educational technology, we have way more modeling that we can do with, with, with computers. So rather than do, now we're, instead of abstract, so now we're basically able to abstract away calculations for the big picture model. So the big picture understanding of something rather than getting bogged down by the calculations. Now this gets a lot of people nervous and the whole basis of Common Core is to understand the mathematics, to be a slave to those details and understand the very bare bones of why certain things work. And again, the problem with that is that you end up losing a lot in the learning because you're focused so much on the little details rather than what math is actually trying to do. Okay, a good example of this is graphing by hand. Okay, there's a lot of teachers that are still really, really into graphing by hand, and I guess it's, it's good to still graph by hand to kind of have an understanding, but at some point, you just kind of have to get rid of that graphing by hand and just focus on just graphing with the graphing calculator or graphing on a computer to see trends. You're not focused so much on values with graphs. You're focused on certain trends, certain ways that the graph is looking. So now you're not being a slave to all those, those itty-bitty of calculations, all that little, each little bits of data, you're focused on the whole trend. When you're looking at the graph, you're looking at the whole list of data, right? So you're looking at, for, you're looking for patterns, you're looking for certain trends that are in that data. Another thing that computers allow us to do now, um, and again, this is this includes graphing calculators, because basically these, these are mini computers. They're not just simple calculators. There are, you can actually program on them. And that's the next thing I want to talk about is actually using programs to solve problems. Now, if students are actually creating programs to solve problems, why are they doing the problems by hand anymore? Okay, that in the real world, as a chemist or as any scientist would do, anything that's repeated pretty much more than once, they're going to create some, some automated way of doing it, whether it's creating a program, whether it's using a spreadsheet. They're not going to actually do every single calculation by hand. In fact, any scientist has so much data that they're never even going to be able to do it by hand, so they would use a computer to do all those calculations. So... What I'm getting at here is based on this history where we're at right now, I would like to see a little bit more differentiation um, in terms of abstraction of using computers. And there are many models of using, uh, it's called computer-based mathematics that are out there that, that focus on that very thing that I'm talking about right now of basically abstracting away calculations and focusing on big picture models. Okay, and models, again, they're just things that represent the real world. Okay, so they're modeling something that happens in the real world, and again, focusing on solving the problems. All the calculations would be abstracted away, um, and, and you can use things like programs, um, things that graph things out really quickly, things that alter the graphs really quickly, programs like uh, Desmos.com, if you've ever seen the Desmos calculator. There's a lot more that you can do with computer programs that you can do than you can do on a simple calculator or that you can do by graphing on by hand because you can manipulate variables so easily that the changes happen before the student's eyes and they can understand more how the model works, big picture, again, rather than the calculations. So what am I getting at with all this? How can we actually differentiate? Um, obviously, we're still um, held to the standards that we have to do. If, if, if you have to teach the Common Core standards, then we are kind of forced to still teach all those little details. However, if you want to differentiate and you want to use the level of abstraction to your benefit, what you can do is try to use math as much as possible in that applied mathematics realm. Okay, yes, you can focus on the pure mathematics. Yes, you can kind of have to because of the standards. But if you start 
with the applied mathematics thinking, mode of thinking in your mind first, before students do any of the calculations, they can actually see the forest for the trees a little bit easier because they're not just being bogged down with the calculations right away and being confused on what they're doing, focusing more on the test rather than what's in front of them, what they're supposed to be thinking about. They can be thinking about real world problems, real world applications. Um, so basically what you want to do is not create slaves to the detail. Now, even though they have to, and more or less they are, they are slaves to the details because teachers are, we have to teach those details. If you start with a very high level of, abstract, of abstraction and work your way down, you're going to find, I feel like you'd, you'd, math would make more sense to the students and they would actually understand why they're, they're dealing with all those little details rather than only focusing on the details, only focusing on studying things that don't even have real world applications um, and then not actually ever able to do anything with it. Um, another great benefit of this is that students might not hate math as much. Okay, a lot of students think that math is very disconnected. It's not, it's not used very much in the real world. But if you focus on how actual scientists apply that actual math and, and show it with computers and show it with modeling before doing any calculations, they might understand the math a little bit more as, as a tool to solve problems rather than something that's hated and that's something that's monotonous and something that's not going to really make any sense. Um, another great thing about this too is if you show them how math is used in computer programming or if you show it for geology or if you show it for a specific science or you show it for business, they might be interested more in those subjects. Because some students are going, oh man, I couldn't do engineering because I have to study all this calculus. That's way too difficult. But if you if you teach them engineering first, and what's great is a lot of like new pro new programs are doing that. Project Lead the Way is starting more with a higher level of abstraction and working its way down. Um, so it's starting with the engineering first, um, rather than the first time they see engineering is when they're in college while they're taking all these other calculus classes and all this other higher level math. They're starting in high school now with these programs. Actually, they're starting in elementary school, I should say. Um, again, with a really high level of abstraction designing things, building things, rather than being bogged down with the details to get students interested. And maybe that interest in the real world um, applicability of things will cause people to not be so scared of math, not be so um, you know uh, intimidated by the math and thinking that it's so pointless that they're not going to get into it. Um, that way we focus on these students that are into the engineering, but even though they don't think they're into the math, it's basically rewriting all that. So, so they're actually going to get into these subjects more because they're not, there's, no, there's no roadblocks in their way, um, which sometimes does occur with math. Um, so that's basically what I want to talk about. It's basically just a philosophy about how ed reform should happen and could happen with the current technology that we have. I didn't actually show specific examples. I named a couple like the Desmos calculator. There are tons of regression models that you can use on calculators. I definitely recommend getting into that if you are interested in differentiating um, based on the level of abstraction. There's tons of online applications to learn how to program and to teach students how to program even on their, their, their TI-83 calculators, TI-84 calculators, so they can use those again to get into programming um, so there's a lot of resources out there to, to to get into with that this video is primarily just more of a philosoph philosophical piece of how you how math is so much more greater than calculations which I basically wrote on the board there math is so much greater than just calculations it's modeling it's solving real world problems and hopefully if we have students see that more they're gonna be into it more so if you have any questions about anything in this video let me know